Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and this is the Reich 1902, and right now, it's going for a really good price on Blade HQ. Now, yesterday, I showed you guys the Max Ace Black Mirror, and it wound up selling out. However, they raised the price on it right after it sold out, so I'm just letting you guys know, as of right now, this is going for like $160 or something like that. Everything will be linked down in the description. Now, they have a bunch of models that are actually really cool looking, going for some really good prices at this exact moment. Um, you know, so at the moment of me filming this video, so if you guys want to check them out, everything will be linked down in the description. Now, this knife right here, full titanium, M390, um, lots of details on it. This carbon fiber, this gold shred carbon fiber looks really good. The inlay work is done extremely well. Reich does some amazing, amazing milling and machining. Um, they're one of the top contenders when it comes to machining and milling. Now, now, the flipper is really high compared to the pivot, which is going to give it a ton of leverage and making it very snappy. Even with a light detent, i um, not saying this has a light detent, but when a knife has a light detent, if they have the flipper tab placed right, it's going to flip with a lot of power because of the leverage. Beautiful drop point blade. Sharp range toil is perfect. It is a small finger toil. It's not a full finger toil, but you know, it allows you to get a full four finger grip back here. I can still get a full four finger grip, but it, it is a little tight uh, because you know, it's not a large knife, you know, just to compare it to the Max Ace really, really quick. The Max Ace and the Reich are very, very similar in size. The Max Ace is a little bit beefier, a little bit bigger, but um, especially because this one has the flipper tab. So, but like I said, you can take advantage and go right over the top of it. Now, good access to the lock bar. They have a little bit, eh, no, I guess they don't really have traction, but the texture of this allows it to have a little bit of texture, even though, or traction, even though this is pretty smooth. Steel lock bar insert, and you can see how they um, anodized the hardware. Now the action, it is a light blade, but it's very smooth. And another thing about Rikes that I've noticed um, of the ones I've tried, now I haven't had a ton on the channel, but the ones I've tried, they're always super glassy smooth. Like a lot of other knives that might even come for more, that might come more expensive, they can be a, not gritty, but not glassy smooth right off the bat. You know, like they, they're still smooth and they break in extremely smooth, but these come very glassy. Um, you can reverse flick it. Now, as far as the detent with the reverse flick, that is actually a little bit on the lighter side, but it works great. And some people don't like a really strong detent for the reverse flick or the thumb flick. And because it is on the lighter side, you can easily slow roll it. Now it's not so light that you're not going to be that you're just going to fail it trying to pop it out, but you could if you try. With the flipper tab, it's going to fire every time because of that leverage. The clip, I'm normally not a big fan of the ceramic ball clips. However, this one works really good. Um, there's not like an extreme amount of tension, so it's okay. Um, Another thing that makes the clip work, you know, better than some of the other ones is that the lock bar cutout is on the inside instead of the outside. You know, and that's another little thing that just makes the details of this knife really good, you know. It's like for the price, they still added a lot of the great details that we like to see in a premium knife without, you know, the extra, extra cost. I normally am not a big fan of it because the ceramic ball leaves like one point of contact and it tends to chew up your pocket over time. They feel okay, you know, like one time going in and out of the pocket, but then over time it, it can really put some wear on your pocket. This one, you know, doesn't seem as bad. It doesn't have as much tension as they normally put on the ceramic balls, but it's still enough tension to where it's going to be good. The centering was perfect. Um, it looks like it's off right now. My pivot is has been coming undone but i didn't want to throw loctite into it because i had to do this video um and after putting loctite on your pivot or any hardware you do want to let it sit for a couple days so 
Now, I, you know, I will Loctite it and then uh, it'll be just fine because I can tell when I do screw in the pivot, it goes right back to center. It just comes loose really fast and that does speak to the tolerances too because a knife that has really tight tolerances tend to push the hardware out a little bit because you have the, the the parts are so tight that this moving back and forth and the flipping action you know can tend to start you know making the the parts start uh, you know coming apart but most knives especially if you you know many I would say most knives let's just say most knives require loctite so that is not a big deal whatsoever and then sometimes you know that can be a good thing now there are some cases where knives are so good that they barely require loctite but that that's pretty rare usually most knives require loctite um it doesn't like all i'm saying is it doesn't speak to the quality of the knife whatsoever um, and sometimes it's a good thing. Backspacer is a full titanium backspacer, as you can see, and they do have a little lanyard pin back there. It's a see-through backspacer, so they did put a little weight relieving. Now, there's not really any weight relieving on the inside at all, so it is just that backspacer. Um, but the way this backspacer goes, how it folds around, you have this like this little cutout in the center which this thing better be perfectly centered when you have a cutout like that because otherwise it would show that it's not centered. So, glad to say that it is very centered and it came very centered right out of the box. The box, it comes with a pouch and a box. Um, nice packaging, decent packaging. The edge came nice and sharp. Um, you know, it is a high angle edge like most factory edges, but it's nice and thin behind the edge at the angle they have it at. It's about 16 thousandths behind the edge, but you have all the room in the world to lower the angle to whatever angle you want with um, without hitting the plunge grind or anything like that. And it's still going to be, you know, nice and thin behind the edge. It is a full flat grind, so it is going to get a little bit thicker after you lower the angle, but not too much. So nice and thin behind the edge. The inlay work, it is protruded slightly, ever, ever so slightly, so you can feel the transition, but you can tell it's on purpose. That's exactly what they wanted to do. And, you know, with the gold hardware, you know, it, the accents with the, the carbon fiber look really, really good. This finish... I'm honestly not sure if it's a coating or if it's just a blasting because it's so smooth and so soft. It doesn't feel like blasted. Blasted usually has a rough texture to it. This is very smooth, so it might be a coating like a titanium nitride coating or a ceramic coating. I'm not sure. You can see that detent there. Um, now... As far as other versions, I do think there are other versions. I think there might even be a larger one for like 200 bones. I'm not positive, but the, the Reich has a ton of knives, and they have a few that have this somewhat look to it that, um, that do come in a larger size. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it. I mean, for the price, it's a really good knife, um, good-looking knife, well-finished no play any direction rock solid no detent lash um snappy action not the most false shutty but that's okay to me you know it, i have that right now i have the pivot tightened all the way down so this uh back end though does kind of gear out a little bit right there if you can see that but in the hand it's not uncomfortable, so it doesn't, at least in my hand, it doesn't really bother me too much, but I'm mostly going to use it like this. Pin trips, utility cuts, you know, going around boxes, things like that, because this would not be the knife I would pick up to sit there and break down cardboard. Um, it's just, out of because I have a big knife collection, I would pick a different knife. Could I do it with this? absolutely um it's going to be just fine nice and comfortable in the hand a little small for what i need for breaking down cardboard but i could do it now going reverse eh, it's not going to be the best just because this flipper tab is kind of in the way so don't expect it to cut ropes very well at least you know 
And a lot of people aren't going around cutting straps and ropes all day, so that might not be a big deal. And if you needed to do it in a pinch, yes, it'd be just fine. Um, but yeah, going downward cutting is going to be really good. I love this blade shape. Now the hole, you see you have a hole and a chamfer. Now that is, it's not really that tight because of the chamfer or whatever you want to call the, the bigger hole. It makes it easy. Now, if it was just a little hole, yes, it would be tight. So, but since the detent is not like crazy strong, it's super easy to snap out. It's not, not hard at all. Detent. Nice and early. Easy to get past. But yeah, there you guys go. Just a quick look at the new Reich 19 1902. Like I said, I will link everything down in the description for you guys if you guys do want to check this out. And I'll, I'll link just Reich um, from Blade HQ so you guys can see other models that are on their site. Um, we are an affiliate, so it does help the channel if you guys do use any of our links down in the description. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.